On March 9, 2022, something happened in Mariupol. That was the extent of what the Russian and the Ukrainian sides agreed about on social media platform Telegram. Telegram is one of the fastest growing platforms in the world. Since the war began, its users have nearly doubled. Its distinctive feature? Barely any content moderation. Around 4.30 p.m. local time, Mariupol City Council posted this video to its Telegram channel. By the end of the day, Mariupol's local Telegram channels had posted a series of photos from the scene. The following morning, those photos made front page headlines the world over. They also appeared somewhere else. This anonymous Russian Telegram channel took to analyzing them. The authors claimed that there are no victims in any of the footage, no moms or babies or doctors inside the hospital. That pregnant lady, a beauty blogger, no stranger to photo shoots. Despite ample evidence of the bombing, this version of the events spread through pro-Kremlin networks like wildfire. Родом Маріуполя дійсно попав під удар української пропаганди. This isn't the first war to play out on social media. But already, it's by far the most meticulously documented one. This war can be broadcasted live. And Telegram has emerged as its main digital battlefield. Like a broken mirror reflecting all sides of the conflict. You can see Ukrainian agencies and Ukrainian decision makers. They're also Russian propaganda. You have Russian independent voices, you have Ukrainian independent voices on Telegram, and you have Ukrainian propaganda. For millions of people far away from the front lines, this war is closer than ever. And to really grasp its fractured reality, you need to understand where it all plays out. Telegram. Мною прийнято рішення по проведенні спеціальної воєнної операції. Shortly after launching a full-scale invasion of a neighboring country, Vladimir Putin waged another war back home, one against free speech. Soon, all independent Russian language media, like TV Rain and Medusa, found themselves blocked in Russia. Foreign media outlets were driven out and major social media platforms restricted inside the country. And a new, swiftly passed law made it risky to even discuss the conflict openly. And so, cut off from other communication channels, Russian state news, independent media, and everyone in between found themselves migrating to one of the few remaining corners of free speech inside the country, Telegram. Within the first month of the war, it became the most popular messenger inside Russia. And a few months after that, nearly a third of the country's population over 12 years old have become daily users. Telegram was launched in 2013 by Pavel Durov, a math and computer whiz from St. Petersburg, Russia. He previously co-founded the country's largest social media network of Kontakte, which he claims he was fired from and forced to leave Russia after refusing to provide user data to the authorities. Telegram was designed to withstand such pressure. If we speak about privacy and freedom of speech, we have very adamant principles about it. We haven't disclosed a single byte of data to third parties, including governments. And it was it's a very libertarian platform. This is also what makes Telegram the app of choice for extremists, fringe groups, and conspiracy theorists. When Proud Boys channels were removed from Facebook, they found a home on Telegram. And then probably the biggest profile incident was after January 6, 2021, when the pro-Trump MAGA style extremist groups and conspiracy theorists were booted off of mainstream platforms and ended up on Telegram. 
But the way Telegram is set up also makes it uniquely suitable for activism. You can chat privately or in groups of up to 200,000 people. And you can also create channels to broadcast your message unilaterally. Ukraine's leader Vladimir Zelensky realized the power of that combination years ago. In 2019, he took to Telegram to campaign for president and won by a landslide. So when Russia invaded, Zelensky turned Telegram into a potent digital weapon. This video was posted to Zelensky's Telegram channel on the third day of the war. One survey found that within the first month of the war, Telegram's popularity in Ukraine shot up 90%. It became a major source of news, a vital communication channel, a lifeline to humanitarian aid and escape routes, and a critical tool of resistance. This brought Telegram's security features under renewed scrutiny. Telegram invented their own encryption mechanisms instead of using the ones that have been tested and proven mathematically to be unbreakable. Telegram was like, no, I think we're going to make our own. Telegram hasn't proven the strength of its elusive encryption methods. But a few years ago, it did prove something. Security is tighter tonight in some of Russia's biggest cities after an explosion tore through a subway train in St. Petersburg. Russian security services claimed that the terrorists used Telegram to communicate with accomplices and demanded encryption keys to decode the messages. Telegram refused, claiming it was technically impossible. So in 2018, Russian authorities blocked Telegram inside the country. Or rather... They have tried to block it, but it didn't work out. So a few years later, unable to beat Telegram, the Kremlin decided to join it. Pro-government channels proliferated. They construct the reality there. And that reality is made up of a bunch of contradictory narratives. This is what makes it so insidious. This is not propaganda machine that tries to give you a certain picture of the world. The idea of this machine is to destroy the concept of truth itself. Take that hospital bombing in Mariupol. Some pro-Russian channels claim that the bombing was staged. Others suggested that it was real, but orchestrated by the Ukrainian army. They're trying to give you a sense of doubt. Well, it's not so obvious. Maybe something happened there, but I'm not sure. Everyone is lying. And despite Telegram housing all sides of the conflict, it's not like users share more of the same reality. Because unlike other social media platforms... Telegram doesn't have any recommendation algorithms that I can tell as far as suggesting content. The main way that information spreads on Telegram is through users forwarding that content. And that's a big difference with Twitter and Facebook. Social media platforms have firmly transformed into digital town squares. Now they're grappling with a fundamental question. How much, or how little, to involve themselves as moderators of speech? Many countries are calling for tougher online regulations. Telegram was recently forced to hand over user data in a copyright case in India. And some argue the platform itself should do more. It's very frustrating to watch a platform like Telegram try so little <laughs> to, to make the experience better. Every time there's a mass shooting, I know for a fact I can go to Telegram and find that video, you know, in no time. But on the flip side, with more active content moderation. There is always a danger of censorship. One day, Telegram can decide that my information is fake. Where is the guarantee that they will always be right on choosing who is fake and who is not? I don't want, you know, a platform, a private business to be this decision maker. 
And the fact that users, not algorithms, are in charge of their news feeds means that they can actually see other perspectives. This is one of the reasons why Telegram is actually so popular. Telegram gives you an opportunity to choose. Telegram offers a deeply fractured window into the Russia-Ukraine war. But zoom out of it a little. And it's precisely these disparate pieces reflecting all kinds of perspectives that ultimately make up the entire picture. We are looking closely to these so-called war reporters. You've got to be very super skeptical about this source of information, but you can use it. Reporters and open source intelligence communities all over the world rely on Telegram to conduct visual investigations and document war crimes in places like Mariupol. Photos and videos posted by all sides can serve as evidence, offer clues, or fill the gaps when other types of data are unavailable. And for the Russian language media, Telegram is a key tool to counter the Kremlin's narrative. Any infrastructure that gives you an opportunity to broadcast in Russia is very important. They have thousands of Telegram channels. They are promoting them heavily but we can create a better product. We can compete. Our Telegram channel became three times bigger since the war started. That's why we are here, to be more effective, maybe, than propaganda faces.